In today's video, I want to show you how to configure Thermus and Thermus X11 applications to set up this environment. Here we are using i3 Windows Manager in Thermus Native without any distro like Debian, Arch, or whatever. So I will show you how to set up everything from scratch, how to download Thermus and Thermus X11, and how to install everything we need. So check the description of this video because I will leave all the links we are going to use. The first link is the official GitHub repository for Thermus. This is the main application we are going to use to configure everything because this allows you to have a Linux subsystem in your Android device. Select the universal APK, click on the link, download it and install it. After this we are going to do the same with Thermux X11. Thermux X11 is the application we are going to use to see the graphical environment because we need to configure everything in Thermux and then we will see the different windows, the file explorer and everything in this application. So just click on the universal APK and install both. Open Thermux application and you will see this message. Remember that you can pinch to thumb so you can make the letters bigger. Now execute the command you are seeing in the screen. So we can choose the closest mirror to our location. Press enter to accept and here press space to select and enter to accept. After this we are going to execute this command you are seeing right now to update everything and upgrade the packages that comes by default with Thermux. If you see this message, type Y and press enter so the installation can continue. Now we can start fixing for example that the letters like you are seeing right now looks a bit weird. So for that we are going to change the font from Thermus and we are going to select a NER font. You can go to my repository, I will leave the link in the description, and go to this part and copy this command. Just paste it in the terminal, press enter, type Y and enter and wait until the process finishes. After this, we can use the tool we have just installed with the command get nf. Choose any of the fonts that you like. For example, I will use this time instead of hack, I will use JetBrains Mono. So just wait until the process finishes. Select the font that we have just installed and you can select the different type if you want it in bold, italic or whatever. For me, I just want to select the regular font. You can exit Thermux and open it again so you will see that now the fonts look way better. With this we can start by installing all the packages we are going to need. Remember that you can set up a full distribution like Ubuntu or Debian in Thermos, so I recommend you checking all my videos. But for now let's continue. We are going to the first step section in my repository, copy the commands and paste them in Thermos. As always, paste them, press enter and when prompted just type Y, press enter again and everything will be installed. Now we are going to install a repository in Thermos, so we can install other packages like Chromium Visual Studio, but I will show you later some videos about it. And we are going to install also the Windows Manager we are going to use in this video. This is called i3 and we are going to use this instead of the Windows Manager with XSC4. So as I said, if you want to install other packages like Chromium Visual Studio or whatever, you can see that here you have the commands. So you can just copy and paste it into Thermux. But I recommend you to take a look to these videos. Here you have the first one. This is the basic setup with XSC4 in case you prefer this instead of i3 because for i3 I recommend a Bluetooth keyboard. And here you can see how to install several applications, how to look if an application is available or not in Thermux Native. So this is the first thing I want to you to take a look, but now we're going to follow with the i3 installation. We're going to use these two repositories. First this one, so just let's continue with the installation, copy the commands that appears in that repository. First we need to install git, because we are going to clone a github repository. Now we're going to download the repository with this command. Just paste in Thermos, wait until everything is downloaded and you will see that a folder has appeared called Thermos Desktop i3. This is the first one. For the installation just copy this, paste into Thermos and this will take a while because this is going to install a lot of different packages and it needs to copy a lot of configuration files. When you reach this point set up a password for your VNC connection but we are not going to use VNC, we are going to use Thermos. Anyway, I will show you how you can connect with real VNC. So in case you want to connect from a computer or some other device, you can connect it remotely to this environment. Now you can see that the terminal has changed a little bit, but we need to start the graphical environment. For this, go to my repository again, 
go to the download script section and copy this. This is the start script for the XLC4 desktop, so we need to change this a little bit. For that, you can first give execution permission with the command chmod plus x and the name of the file. And now we are going to modify the file. So you can do it as you prefer. I like to do it with nano, so nano and the name of the file. Go until you see this line and remove xc 4 session and replace it with i3, just this. Ctrl O and Ctrl X to save and exit. And now we are going to use the move Linux command to rename the file. So you can write the first name of the script and then the name that you want, start i3. So you can see that we can run now the start i3 Thermux uh, script. When you run it, you can wait a few seconds. Thermux X11 application will start and you can see this is the environment. This is thought to be used with the keyboard instead of the mouse like a normal desktop. So I will show you a few tips. First, we need to modify the i3 configuration because I personally don't have a keyboard with the Windows button. So we are going to use control button instead of the Windows button to do the different shortcuts. So here in the first line, just type control. Now, if you press control W and you write control and type enter, you can see that you can look for control words in this file. So we are going to remove this. Now we can type control W and press enter again and we are going to the next control word. In this case we can comment this line and we are good to go. Control O and Control X to save an exit and we can start again the graphical environment. Now in this case as I'm going to use the key control instead of the Windows key, I can do the different shortcuts. For example, if I press Control E, I open the Explorer. If I press Control Enter, I open the terminal. If I press Ctrl R, I will open this menu to look for any other application. So you can check all the different shortcuts that are available in the configuration file. So you can learn how this works or you can change whatever you prefer. Now we are going to try to apply the configuration that we saw in the beginning of the video because you can see that this is way different than this. So we are going to follow the instructions in this repository. But I have to say that I have several problems, but I will show you how I try to fix them and how everything works at the end. So just clone the repository. Now you can check that we have Thermos Desktop and Thermos Desktop i3. In this case, the new one is just Thermos Desktop. Copy the same commands to install it, paste them, and the process will take again a while. So just wait until everything finishes. Set up the VNC password in case you want to use VNC. And ideally, if we run now the i3 command, the start i3 script, everything should work. But sadly, we need to fix a couple of things. For now, I want to show you how to use Real VNC Viewer to connect remotely to your device. You can use this program in Windows or in any other operative system. So just download the application from Google Play Store if you are in an Android device and type in the plus button. You can write here the IP or in case you are from your own Android device, you can just type localhost and write the port. As you can see, the port is 5901 so just type two points and the name of the port and give a name to the connection create it and now i recommend you in the picture quality set to high so you can avoid some general problems here just type on ok write the password we have just write in thermux and click on continue you will see now that we are in the first environment because we didn't close the connection so here we have the first environment we have just installed. In case you install both like I did, you can see that at the end of Thermos you see uh, two points and a number two. This means that we are in the second session. So if here modify the connection to connect to localhost two points two, you can see that we are in the second session, but this session is not correct. So we are going to fix this. The first thing I did is check that in Thermos X11 we have the same problem. If you run Thermos X11 and you see this screen, this means that we are having some problems and we need to copy some configuration files. So the first thing is installing the XC4 desktop because this will install some dependencies we need. And now we are going to try to install again the environment, the second environment we saw. 
but I have to say that this time I got the same problems. I think this is because we need to copy manually some configuration files to the configuration folder that by default is created for i3, polybar and all the things that the environment uses. But I want to show you how I fix it without doing manual work. So in the installation, just as before, click on Y here, create a new password for the VNC connection because you will get prompted for that. And what I did is basically running the XSE4 environment like a normal one and then trying to install again this uh, second environment. Why? Because when we start the XSE4 environment, we are going to set up automatically all the dependencies, configurations and everything that then i3 Windows Manager is going to use. Or at least this is what I think is happening here. So for now, just exit. Let's download the script to start the XSE4 session. You can have it from my repository. Download it, give execution permissions to the file and execute it like we did before with the i3 start script. This time you will see that the XSC4 environment is working without any problem. You could use this and customize, you have other videos in the channel, but we want to use i3 Windows Manager. So let's run again the install scripts. I think instead of running it this again, you can just copy and paste the, config the configuration files, but I just wanted to make sure we are doing it right. So I installed it both, the both environments we have seen in the video. The first one, which is darker in the terminal. This works without any problem. This was working the first time and it's still working the second time in case you prefer this environment rather than the other. And now we are going to install the second one. So just again, move to the corresponding folder, execute the setup script with the installation option and wait. Now you can just run the start i3 script and finally you will see that everything is working fine. But we need to modify some configuration files. So again, if you don't have a keyboard with the Windows key, which is called the super key, we need to select another key, in, in my case control, to trigger all the key combinations. For example, you can click here to open the terminal. You can make it bigger with control shift and plus. And we're going to the dot config and inside this the i3 folder and we are going to modify the configuration like we saw in the video before we're going to modify the mod 4 which is the super key the windows key with control type control w to look for control press enter and you will see the different entries in the file with the control letters this one we are going to just comment because we're not going to use the shortcut control o, control s to save an exit and we need to close Termux x11 and open it again so the changes are applied here just control c and you can execute again the start script and now Termux will be open Termux x11 and you can use the keyboard for example as in the other environment control e is for, is for the file explorer control enter is for the terminal control r is for the search programs so you can do a lot of things here remember that you can install also visual studio code or the chromium browser for example later in the video i will show you all the key combinations available but i have to say that sorry for the video this might be complex or not that straightforward to follow because i found several problems but i wanted to find the best way just to install everything automatically so you can have the i3 configured with everything like you're seeing right now you have the temperature you have the volume you have the ram you have everything and you don't need to do all this configuration manually so i hope you like the video don't forget to share like and subscribe Leave in the comment if you want to see anything in particular. I have to say that I'm waiting for a couple of mini computers called SBC, like a Raspberry Pi. So if you are interested, please leave in the comments what you want to, to see with them, because I plan to do some videos on how to create a VPN server, how to create your own cloud, like your own Google Drive with this type of computers that are very similar to the Raspberry Pi. So finally, I just want to show you this is the environment we have installed. And if you want to see all the information available for this environment, check the repository. 
if you go down here you can see all the information on everything you can do and also you can find the different key combinations so please take your time to read everything because i3 windows manager is not like any other type of window manager when you can drag and drop the mouse and modify everything this is thought to be used just with the keyboard so i highly recommend you a bluetooth keyboard also i plan to do a video with all my accessories like my bluetooth keyboard my bluetooth mouse and everything so if you are interested please leave a comment and i will show you my android setup 